Good morning. Uh, this is Avik Das Gupta from Vikram Mesara by Community Science Center in India. Uh, today I am going to talk about development of non-formal education curriculum in astronomy for middle school students developed in our center. Before going ahead, I would like to introduce my center, which is Vikram Mesarabhai Community Science Center. This was established by Dr. Vikram Mesarabhai in 1966 and for spreading science education and mathematics education uh, to the grassroots level. Not only educators like us will, uh, come here, but also teachers, scientists, students, and community as a whole all come together to make a small change in the society in the terms of scientific thinking. And our education key is question to discover, which stands for as we go ahead in the scientific thinking. I would like to explain a bit about School Science Forum under which we have developed this curriculum. This program is an annual program of our center wherein uh, students come uh, and the, from Ahmedabad of mostly 5th to 9th standard. There are 30 sessions and in one session is of 1.5 hours. Each session is with a different labs. So in this whole yearly session, they visit also astronomy lab. And in that, we have uh, from fifth, we have one session in fifth, two, one session in sixth, one session in seven, two session in eight, and three sessions in nine, depending on how we expose them to astronomy. All this curriculum which we have developed is in parallel to the central uh, textbook in India, which is an NCRT textbook, which almost in all over the schools, or based on that, we have uh, we have taken some topics which are introduced to these students, and then we have tried to expand it from there in some sort of curriculum. So I will start by explaining each of these uh, standard wise. So first going to fifth, they are exposed to the concept of moon phases, this new moon and full moon. And then we try to give them an explanation of why the moon phases. Moon phases is a very common thing by till fifth. Uh, we ask for observation from the student and they reply that they have seen these phases uh, they don't see moon as the same, but why do they have? They don't know. So we try to explain this by using uh, demonstrations and also an activity, as you can see on the side. This activity uh, with them to understand why the phases are happening. And uh, since we are talking about phases, the next thing comes as uh, eclipses. So why eclipses are not frequent, why eclipses are happening, when eclipses happen. So all these connecting points, we try to give them an exposure in class six. Next, going to class six, um, the next certain step in astronomy comes as uh, letting them understand uh, the stars. So what the idea is to enable them understand constellation and identify constellation um, for a specific period of time, supposedly July to September, and uh, as they are seen in AMW. And so first what we do is we give them a blank sheet of uh, uh, constellation, which basically we give all the stars and we let them uh, understand if they have ever seen one constellation. Uh, the first question generally comes at this point is uh, we don't see this many stars. So we tell them that is due to the light pollution, underlining the fact of light pollution at that point. Uh, what we do next is uh, we say in one one constellation and the four flows behind uh, them. It 
some of these are uh, well known have well known western folklore some of these have indian folklore it is important to understand uh, asterism in indian perspective suppose saptarishi uh, a group of seven stars in the arsa major constellation is very famous in india and we let them understand that uh, why what is the difference between asterism and a big constellation like arsa major the next uh, certain point comes to zodiacs uh, explaining them what are these and what is the speciality of this uh, at this point uh, the students generally ask that uh, uh, what about the pseudo signs and we let them understand that uh, how zodiac leads to prediction and pseudo signs and uh, why we should be aware of the earth. so this is the idea of uh constellations next in seventh standard we review the constellations and uh, then we go ahead to let them understand circumpolar constellations uh, especially in the northern circumpolar region with this activity of uh, finding when they can find old star using arsa major and uh, asiopia so if on a given month and given time they can find any of these they can come down to star uh we also explain them that the different constellation movement uh, based on seasonal and their latitudinal difference uh also uh, what is the difference in circumpolar movement in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere and leading to the question whether there is a pole star in the southern is there also uh, this uh, is accompanied in the class 7 there is another session which is about which is in night sky gazing by this point we are exposed to different constellations so it is a nice point of reference to actually take them to um, let them see the night sky uh, identifying it in real life and also Uh, showing them some of the deep sky objects through telescopes so moving ahead in class 8 uh, we have two sessions as i have mentioned uh, but this is moving a bit side on the this is on solar astronomy so by this point they know that astronomy is generally in night uh, but we wanted to have uh, the children a uh, concept of solar astronomy too that daytime can we can also do astronomy in the daytime so in the first session we expose them to solar uh, astronomy as a general fact general information then how sun's daily seasonal and yearly motions um, we can observe and that we do by making a horizon to and that uh, apart from this they take one sun spot observation what we do is in the next session which is the second session we again repeat this sunspot observation and that day we explain them how sun uh, is the nearest star and how we can understand much more things about a star by studying our sun and so what they do is this uh, observation of sunspot which one week apart and discuss then how the sunspot movements have happened how they uh, differ and uh, what things we can understand from them. the other thing which we do in the second session is to make a sun projector or a ball mirror as you can see here uh, they this is basically a mirror on a ball which projects the image to the sun and we understand that they try to understand how far the image moves Uh, which basically gives you how far the earth rotates so it's a very intuitive uh, demonstration or activity where you actually understand actually have get a feel like how far the earth moves so this is of eight moving ahead the nine till this point we have done all the astronomy not emphasizing the need of telescope but by this time they are exposed to the concepts of reflection and refraction so we start from there and then we slowly go ahead to in the first session 
the refractive telescopes and demonstration and handling of them. In the second session, we go to the reflected telescopes and demonstration and handling and uh, properties of a telescope like resolution, magnification, and the different filters we use in any telescope. For this session, we have developed a $1 telescope, paper-based telescope, which you can see here. Students make them uh, in one objective box and in other eyepiece box. And they uh, calibrate by the end of the second session. They assemble it and calibrate it because of their vision, as you can see in the second. Also, uh, in the third session, we want to give these students uh, a broad idea about telescopes apart from the optical ones only. So we give them an idea of different uh, telescopes from based and space-based observatories and also the gravitational wave observatory. Uh, for students, there are some students at this point who want to go into astronomy. So we explain them how they can go ahead. And there are some students who probably would not go into astronomy, but they want to connect with us, connect with the astronomy field. So we let them have an understanding of citizen science projects, uh, data archives, and stuff. So uh, to conclude my talk, uh, the points we had had during designing this whole curriculum is uh, we we first took a list of the topics which we had in the NCRT textbook, and based on that, we took one one step ahead in each of these uh, subtopics. Um, we started from a very uh, in each of the session, we try to start from an. Uh, observation which is daily life observation like in sundial shadows and then we slowly and build up the astronomical concepts around it the third thing as we have increased uh, the astronomical concepts with increment in their standard we did not introduce them telescopes just in fifth because um, then the impression would be that we need telescope to always that's not the case and uh, Obviously, since this is astronomy and nowadays we have a huge lot of information coming to us, they have, these students have questions, so we'll, uh, we give them a small time frame in our sessions to ask questions and we leave them with common answers so that they can ponder on a lot more deeper questions. Generally, they will come back sometime uh, after the lecture or in the next session to us for asking those. And finally, the whole curriculum was set up to inspire them uh, to wonder about the universe and the uniqueness of Thank you for uh, your patience. Thank you, uh, IU Shaw Workshop, for giving me this chance to present it, present my work here. And thank, lastly, thank you, the VACC family, who support was inevitable.